has to be one of the coolest intros I've seen in any video game I've ever played. So we finally made it to the end. The last game in the series, not counting the remasters, had upon three. I've been anticipating this event for quite some time. Ever since I asked for that light goal and we reached it, so here we are. So after you know Pat Upon 2, you know that was a successful game. Three years later, we got a third game, Pat Upon 3. Now, from the reviews I've seen, people said that this game is way too different from Pat Upon 2. But then again, they were complaining about how Pat Upon 2 felt similar. So do you guys just miss the old formula or did you guys just wanted to move on? I, I, I don't get it. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get started. So the game starts off with some intro with some cave, and then we see a light who asks our class na and name. I'll pick Tatarase and call myself Blake, because why not? Then we see this huge box with frozen patapons. And for the reason of that is because the Patapons opened the box and a silver star with a beard called Silver Hoshi Pond comes out of it. And we press pawn a couple of times and we're on frozen now. Hooray! And Hoshi Pond explains that the Hoover hero is the essence of the Kami Pond, the Almighty, basically. And you hear a familiar brunt and hey, it's Patapon! Wait, how come he's not frozen? Then we do the march, no. Revive, Ton, Chin, and Can. They also have the essence of the Asian, so that's probably going to make them very strong. We keep going, and Hatapon gives us the Patadrum. Then we finish the mission. So after that, we find ourselves in the Cave of Balor, which is the main hub of this game. No mini games this time, sadly. We have this totem, which leads to the world map. Sukapom, who tells us if there is a high level lodge, which has never happened in this playthrough of, my, of the game. The barracks, where we change classes and equipment. Team totem for clan shit and the armory where we see our weapons and scrap them and the blacksmith where we can upgrade weapons and armor there's also the battle gate and dark hero portal but I can't use those for obvious reasons I'm gonna skip the tutorial since you guys I just know probably know how Patapon works and get straight to the mission so we find ourselves in the land of giant and we see those things that they're, they, they're, those things are called deaths minus the A and they are somehow uglier than the Akuma pawns and weaker too. I mean, that's probably because of the Uber Hero. Because you see, your Uber Hero is going to be doing most of the work in this game. Because he's a lot better at killing shit than the other three heroes that we have in our way. With that out of the way, we finish the mission and continue to the next one. We find ourselves in some white bamboo forest where Death are calling some guy named Rage Wolf, and we keep going. And, there, and he appears, and he's complaining about teleporting, and we curb stomp him and finish the mission. We see Blake on his way back to the cave, and Rage Wolf teleports in front of him and spits out some exposition and challenges him to a duel. The uber hero accepts the challenge, and then we head to the area. Here's how it works. So whoever scores the most points before the timer runs out or gets to their side of the map wins. There's these Karen towers for it to not go too quickly, so we win the duel. Then we see Blake running back home, ignoring Rage Wolf, and then Rage Wolf tells the Uber Hero not to get too cocky with his power because it's useless in the Cave of Valor. But then Rage Wolf mentions something called Summon. Then Blake at then the Uber Hero asks, where can he learn this? But then Rage Wolf is all like, don't ask me, and then he disappears. Then Blake tells him about the Summon thing after we head to the Cave of Valor. And this game has dungeons. Basically, if one of your troops die, they won't come back. If you don't summon or get to the next floor, basically, they'll stay dead until you get to the next floor or you summon. There's also these blue doors that require keys. More on that later. So we get to the top where we fight the first Archfiend, who awakens the Donga. And man, the Donga has been looks like he's been through some shit, some deep shit. But it doesn't matter since we just kill him like in less than a minute. And after that dungeon. Then the Uber Hero senses something. It appears and it's Shaka Pawn who asks Blake if they missed a chest or not, which I did not. And then he gives us a summon. Cool. Here's how summons work. They work like this. Do the dawn command. Then you gotta do some, some timing while you relentlessly attack at the end. And then when the, when the summon finishes, spheres come out doing massive damage. 
So that's one summon. I, I didn't get the other one in this playthrough, so I, c I can't really show it. So after that, we see Hapon walking, and then sees Medin budge, but then Hoshipon tells him that his flag just budged it. What a dummy. So the next mission, we're in the snow fields, where we fight rock monsters and death. After that, we see Rageful in the blizzard looking for something, and then freezes. He budges out and heads to this ice tower where we meet Nai things. Basically the Patapon girl of this game. Rageful and her make a plan to destroy the Uber hero. Ashipon then warns us of the of naughty fins. In the next mission we head to our ice forces and destroy while fighting these ice salamanders. They're, they're really annoying. Don't get too close to them when they're about to explode. It's an instant kill. I learned that the hard way like nine years ago. We destroy the ice fortress and they retreat. Then the Uber hero is pondering about naughty fins. She appears and complains about how Blake destroyed her home, but then Blake sees through her tricks and thinks just go downhill from there. Like, ill. No, no, stop that. <laughs> After that awkward situation, we see Blake having a bad dream and some exposition. One thing I forgot to mention is when you reach a certain level on a certain class, you unlock a new class or ability and their appearance will change. My favorites are Kabata, Tondengan, and Mayamasar. Two Uber Hero abilities from the second game return with some new classes like Great Sword, Dual Wielding Swords, Healing Mage, Great Sword Munch, and Spear or Axe, and a goddamn cannon. The next mission as us racing knifings and rageful with obstacles in the wind. I win the race, obviously, and we see a tower of purity. Knifin appears, t telling the Uber hero that beauty is on the inside, and the Uber hero says she's pretty much just advertised, which is hilarious the first time you see that. Like, that's not something you expect the Uber hero to say. So we head into the tower of purity, and so far, you know, this game, pretty easy so far. But that's about to change. The first floor ain't too tough, but the second floor is tough, especially the last part with the giant rock monsters. These are mini bosses, by the way, and they're somehow harder than the actual boss at the end of the dungeon. Yeah, yeah, the actual dungeon itself is harder than the boss. Let, let, let's that sink in. So we get to the top and we fight the second arch fiend, which is Gaian. He's easy, that's all you need to know. Shifon then asks us how it went. We said it went pretty well. The next mission has us in the Rocky Munchens where we fight wolves. He's gonna forward smash us. Then we see Knife in and Rage Wolf in some place. I, I never really understood what this place was. Like, even when it was Pat Upon 1 and 2, I, I don't know what this place really was. Alright, so we see Rageful of a knife and just standing there when they meet standoffish Sonarchy, some yellow guy with a horn, who tells them both about his evil plan to destroy the Ubi hero. Sonarchy was privately Prince Sonarch of the Au ancient civilization with his father, King Egil. Also, I forgot to mention that Rageful is Makaton and Knife and the Pratapon Princess. That's never explained in the game, but. For some reason, it is. The next mission has us in a location I ca cannot name, where we fight them, but they trap us. But we break through the trap immediately, because, you know, we're, we're the uber hero, we can't be stopped. And then we just clap those dark heroes. After that, Blake senses someone, and it is Sonarchy, where he congratulates Blake for outplaying him, and Blake feels this pressure. And Sonarchy challenges him to a duel. After that, Hoshishman spits out some more exposition, then he heads to the arena, or firing range, where we have to hit this lever and launch missiles to get points, or destroy the opposing team, which I did pretty easily. Sonarchy said that that would never happen, but it happened in like two minutes. Then Blake cheese the, the Castle of Justice. Naughty Finch then asks Blake if she can go with him. I say yes, obviously, because I got a simp on these pad hoes. Come on, I can't just do it. But then Rageful just comes in and says, No, you can't go. After that, Hoshibon spits out some more exposition. Then we head to the Castle of Justice, and I get to the blue door, and... Wait, wait, wait. Why didn't I get a key? Oh, where are the keys? 
Uh, so, so you guys remember that sign that told a poem about dancing? Well, it wasn't joking. You have to get to this one part of the first floor where there's two light torches and dance to get a key. And just to say this, the, the key system, it, it, it's, it's ass in this game. Like, let's say you run out of keys in one dungeon. And let's say you're about to get to the boss. But then, uh-oh, you ran out of keys. So then you gotta go to an other dungeon and waste like 10 minutes of your life doing that dungeon just to go another 10 minutes getting back to the top. Then you can fight a boss. So I literally wasted 20 minutes just doing two, two, two missions that I just could have done more shit. Yeah, it, it gets annoying. But hey, at least when you open the blue doors, they stay open. You don't have to reopen them at least. Thank, thank God. That would make this game way worse. After that, after we get to the third floor, we get to the next arch fiend that possesses Kano Gs. And God damn, Kano Gs theme is awesome. Actually, the music in this game is awesome. It's gonna be my uh, my favorite soundtrack out of the three games. You should listen to it. Just just take a look at this OST. <laughs> Kill Kyle Gias, then Sonarchy meets a new dark hero, Ravenous. And hey, that side looks familiar. Ravenous t then tells Sonarchy that he won't give up this rare item. I'm not sure what the rare item is. And then some exposition they talk about, and they go inside the castle. The next mission is just another regular death mission. Then we're fighting in a jungle while fighting trees, and then the dark heroes show up, and then we just clap them immediately. Then Ravenous challenges us to a duel. Which we win, because we're the best. Exposition about the fucking rare item, which is Mecha Hoshipon, by the way. And Silver Hoshipon congratulates us for winning the duel. The next mission, we head to the estate of Earthness, where we fight this octopus thing? Like, I never really didn't know what these things were. And, and trees, obviously, yeah, because there's definitely trees in a castle. After that, we get to the fourth arc fiend, where he possesses Shuckle. This boss is so fucking annoying because it constantly shoots that white shit that puts our heroes to sleep. But, you know, eventually I get through it. The next mission, we're in a desert killing these reaper looking things. They're, they're cool. You know, not too tough, but they look cool. After that, the uber hero is walking. Then knife fins appears and then says that she's shit. Then we meet Buzzcrave. He, he looks like a purple tumor. Hashipon then yells exposition for like the 20th time. Then the next mission, we're in the Oasis where we fight Buzzcrave and the others, which we clap because we're gods. And after that, Buzzcrave says that he challenges in notes, which means he sends us a letter that he wants to deal, which is a race that we win. Then we see Ravenous sobbing over his rare item in a flashback place where we see him as Gong. I mean, were you really surprised about this? Because it, it is obvious from the start. And basically, the, the Archfiend gave him that raven mask, and he turned him into Ravenous. Hashipan then tells us where the Dark Heroes get possessed by the Archfiends, they recover their memories. That's interesting. The next mission has us in the Lavers of Restraint, which is the, which is a four-floor dungeon. The first floor, you're killing giants and running from fire. The second floor, you have to get through doors without getting burnt alive. The third floor, you see Rage Wolf using an agent weapon, which shoots lasers, but it doesn't do much to us, which we easily destroy. And the fourth floor, we see the fifth Arc Fiend, who possesses Sioking. Really easy fight. Like, do you see? Like, 
the bosses are easier than the dungeons themselves. Which is really sad when you think about it. After that, the mission, we see the dark heroes in their base and see naughty things healing. And a new hero called Kabit, <laughs> who is, was a guy and now is a girl. Pat upon trap, everybody. Sonaki is also him, her son. Next mission, we see Black Hashipon and Gold Hashipon, basically all the Hashipons. And the Black Hashipon summons this fat monster who eats shit and can eat you to restore HP. And you have to mash to get out of it. After that mission, we see Buzzcrave and Ravenous pondering about demons. And what the fuck is that? What is that thing? Is that, is that a turtle? It, it talks too. Yeah, that's Slog Turtle. And they're plotting about something. I, I don't know. I'm trying to destroy the Uber Hero again. Hashipon tells you about what happened earlier. Uh, I mean, that's not really that important. In the next mission, we're fighting every Dark Hero again, which we clapped them. We're gonna clap them cheeks at this point. And after that, the Uber Hero runs into some of them for exposition. And Hashipon. Blake runs into all of them, then some exposition. Then we're fighting in a firing range where we defeat them in Hossi Spawn Exposition. Kill me! Then the next mission is a dungeon in a fucking volcano. That is awesome. This whole dungeon is awesome. This is honestly the best dungeon in the game by far. Those head choppers which go off each minute and those baby dragons. It's also really challenging, so be careful. So we get to the 6R theme where we fight. You gotta be fucking me. We have to fight this fucking dog? Really? Really? It was already a pain in the ass in the second game. No, but he went down really easily. He's a complete fucking pushover in this game, which is good, so I don't have to spend hours on it like last time. After that, Blake is walking back. Then Naughty Fins appear and tells Blake that she's leaving. Okay. I mean, you could have just told that earlier, but tell me now. The next mission we fight Ravenous, where he's running a porcelainous dragon. Fuck this dragon, by the way, it's so cheap, which we defeat. Then Ravenous attacks us, but he's just messing with us. Then the Uber Hero asks, What's he gonna do now? And he says he's gonna live for himself. The next mission, we're fighting Dark Heroes once again, and we have the Sigaton tank with us. Fuck yeah, this is cool. After that, it tells us that Rage Wolf is useless to them. And then he he tells them to fuck off, and then he leaves. The next mission, we fight the Uber Heroes for the last time. And you know, for the last ditch effort, they didn't really put much of a fight, you know? Because this is the last effort, and they just died so easily. After that, Sonaki and are arguing a and apparently Sonarki is corrupt or something, and <laughs> is going to give him some medicine, I guess. So then we head to the final mission, and the mission's first floor sucks, because these racer sub things instantly kill you, and they go off like every 20 seconds or so. And when one of your troops die, especially the Uber hero, like, you have to deal with those ice salamanders, and trying to deal with about the Uber hero, it's, it's kind of annoying. So the second floor ain't too bad though. So then we get to the third floor where we fight the final Archfiend who takes control of Archie Pandora who looks like a witch. Pretty cool boss fight though, you know. It, it was tough, but it was awesome. After that, the Dark Heroes portray <laughs> and Sonarchy claps. <laughs> then we see Hadapon, Ton, Shin, Tan thinking that they're in Earth then. And after that, we see the Uber Hero, where he gets three choices live, die, or stay the Patapons. I pick the third option, and he dies. And we see the boys pop out of a portal, and they see Silver Hoshi from slowly fade away and see Earth's hand. So, this is what I spent five years working for, huh? You know, not, not worth it if I have to say so myself. And after that, the credits play, and Menon and Hoshi Pom meet. And that's Patapon 3. Now, technically, this is better than the second game, but I, I like the I like the second game more. 
the bosses in like Patapon 1 2, they look like cartoon monsters, but if you look at the ones in Patapon 3, they look like something out of a fucking Shin Megami Tensei game. Which is not a bad thing, you know, it's cool. But, you know, that's not. Patapon, it's like a cartoon world, and you see like these fucking Shin Megami Tensei demons, you're like. Am I playing Patapon? One thing I really like about this game is the, the the build variety. Like, there's so many things you can do with the builds. Like, you could be go defense. You could go all out attack. You could go fucking full support. The gear is also pretty cool. Like, these weapons look fucking awesome. And I was pretty proud of how my character looked like from a, from the end of the game. Cause, man, the class variety. It's it's all great. But I kind of don't. I kind of miss the mini games because th those were great. Like you know, if you wanted to get resources too, and the evolution map was great. But you know, since this wanted to be more like an RPG, they they streamlined it. And that was a great game. You know, it's technically better. But you know, I'm gonna say Powderpoint Two is more solid.